We're here at the conference on retroviruses and opportunistic infections, which is the 20th conference. And we're here with Kevin DeCock, who is the chair of the conference this year, who has been uh, our most regular. In fact, every year you've been here to talk about the history of the background and the drama that has unfolded in Africa especially. You started in Kenya and now you are back. You're with the CDC in Kenya, back where you began, kind of. Would you bring us up to speed with the, the, the dynamics and the, and the unfolding of the improvements that happened over the last number of years? Sure. Um, well, good to see you again, Fred. It, it has become an annual event. Um, so here we are in 2013, um, and I think we can say there's been tremendous progress in the uh, fight against AIDS, in the scale-up of programs and interventions to address HIV particularly in Africa, which remains the most heavily affected part of the world. Uh, mm -hmm. There's about 34 million people living with HIV globally. Uh, Two-thirds of them um, are uh, in Africa, in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, if you talk about women and children, it's uh, 80 and 90 percent uh, of HIV infections uh, in women and children are in Africa. So it remains very heavily affected, but there's been tremendous progress in prevention treatment and care, uh, we are seeing dramatic declines in new infections. Uh, there's a, um, a dozen countries or more that have seen uh, at least 25% uh, reduction or more in HIV incidence. Um, but we still have, um, you know, tremendous challenges. Um, the scale-up of treatment has been remarkable. The scale-up of prevention of mother-to-child transmission has been remarkable but we still have a long ways to go. Mm -hmm. I think we're, uh, if we think of uh, the scale-up of treatment, there's more than 8 million people in the world on antiretroviral therapy thanks to these large initiatives such as uh, PEPFAR, the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, the Global Fund, other uh, international financing, and national governments themselves. Um, but that's not universal access yet, and uh, we still have... Uh, you know, wh over uh, one and a half million deaths from AIDS annually, and that needs to be reduced. But the progress has been substantial. Mm -hmm. This is the 20th year of CROI. Perhaps I could just say a couple of words yes, about that. Um, it's given us an opportunity to look where, we, where we've come from. Uh, the first CROI was in 1993. Those were dark days. Mm -hmm. Those were dark days in the United States. Uh, it was really the low point of morale and op you know, hope around HIV. And it's, it was quite astonishing what science has brought. Um, it was in 95, 96 that we saw the power of combination antiretroviral therapy. And who would have thought that, you know, seven, eight years later, we were beginning programmatic scale-up, 2003, 2004, beginning programmatic scale-up in Africa. And, of course, the dramatic uh, declines in um, morbidity and new AIDS cases and in deaths in the United States uh, were just remarkable in the mid to late 90s. However, the conference also is reminding us of what a long way to go we, we have. Um, and in this country, in the United States, the challenges of HIV, particularly in men who have sex with men and particularly in men who have sex with men of color, particularly the African-American community, uh, very, very major challenges. Mm -hmm. So optimism, but realism at the same time. I can't, uh, one can't help but think what it would have been if we hadn't made the investment. And there was always that concern, what about the infrastructure? Can they tell time when they know when to take pills? And, and all that was dispelled with the, with the first attempts. And I guess that was what made it seem realistic. And then, then we have drugs that were really worthy of, yes. uh, of the community. Yes, that yes. And, there's, uh, and again, there has been uh, continuous progress in this regard. The drugs have gotten better. Uh, more user-friendly, mm -hmm. uh, more durable, mm -hmm. uh, more forgiving, if you yes. will. Um, we have once, it is possible today to get a generic mm -hmm. form of a once-daily therapy, which is mm -hmm. remarkable. Essentially the same therapy that most people initiating therapy in the United States are taking mm -hmm. uh, through uh, generic medications. Mm -hmm. That's all possible. It's within reach. Um, so the you know, the achievements have been tremendous. At the same time, we cannot let up. We cannot let up because, you know, there's a lot of talk about the end of AIDS. Is this a possibility? Mm -hmm. It depends how you define it. And there was a very good presentation by Professor 
François Dabis from the University of Bordeaux uh, at yesterday's plenary. It depends how you define the end of AIDS, but if we plan for the next couple of decades, we can make major, major inroads into mm -hmm. reducing this as a public health threat so that it remains today. So what will your charge be in, in Kenya now? What will your responsibilities be there? Well, at CDC, uh, the organization I work for, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, of course, uh, headquartered here in Atlanta, mm -hmm. um, we have a very large presence in Kenya. Our major partner is the Ministry of Health of the Re mm -hmm. Republic of Kenya, uh, but we also work with a host of other partners uh, academ in, in academia, in civil society, in the faith-based world. Um, we have a very large PEPFAR program. Um, it's one of the biggest in the world uh, w with other U.S. government agencies. Um, we also have a very large presence for other public health work, particularly in other infectious diseases, including mm -hmm. in malaria, mm -hmm. uh, but in uh, other infectious diseases as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's a uh, really very interesting uh, array of public health work integrating interventions with research and operational research uh, in very close collaboration with the Ministry of Health. I should just add that uh, there, there are, of course, new problems that emerge or that are better recognized. And we shouldn't forget the, you know, the, uh, the increasing burden, purport, the increasing proportional burden of non-communicable diseases such as cardiovascular disease mm -hmm. and road traffic injuries. And uh, I, I very much hope that we'll be able to get some further insights into those problems as well. For so many years we heard whenever we'd mention, if we'd talk to people from Kenya or from Sub-Saharan Africa, about the, uh, ask them about HIV and AIDS, they would frequently say, well, TB and malaria. How is that, how can you couch where that is on the stage of progress? And, and well, it's, it's very interesting. It was, you know, I mentioned 1993 uh, as the low point of, uh, uh, of our sort of feelings around HIV um, and when the first CROI was held. Very interestingly, it was around the same time that uh, a very influential report was published by the World Bank. They, pub they, they devoted that year's annual report, the World Development Report, uh, to health, and it was called in, uh, Investing in Health. And it highlighted that these three diseases, HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria, were disproportionately affecting the African continent and were major um, burdens of major causes of disease and death. And we have seen great progress in all three. Um, to some extent, the AIDS investment has dragged along, uh, you know, these other diseases it's with them. It's more complicated. Um, but it's also, con you know, our efforts have contributed to infrastructure and so on. Mm -hmm. But the funding has gone up for malaria uh, to a substantial degree, including through mm -hmm. another U.S. government initiative, the President's Malaria Initiative, which also mm -hmm. was started, like PEPFAR, by President Bush. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's doing great work. Um, reducing the burden of malaria. TB is uh, uh, also, there's been increased investment through, to some extent through PEPFAR, through the Global Fund. Uh, in Kenya, um, you know, a certain, in, in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, depending on the level of HIV, uh, quite a, a proportion of tuberculosis is attributable to HIV. In Kenya, it's about 40% probably. The prevalence of HIV infection in patients with tuberculosis nationally is 35, 40 percent, something like that. In parts of the country, it's higher. So to combat TB, we not only have to invest in TB programs, but we also, if we do better with HIV, we will indirectly influence the tuberculosis epidemic. So these three diseases uh, are being addressed much better than they were, but again, we cannot let up. Now, what's very interesting is if, if we did let up, what happens? Well, malaria you know, is actually the most sensitive to, um, to programmatic interruptions. If, you, if, if your programs for malaria are reduced, you see a difference very, very quickly. Is there a in, herd immunity type of thing? Uh, it's very, it's, it's, so it's more complicated. It's more compli it's, it's, there's a relative immunity, but it's not complete. And the, in, the, in these high burden countries for malaria, it's children particularly that carry the greatest burden and where you see the big mortality. So um, if the malaria program uh, is, is not adequately supported, you very quickly see an increase in malaria disease and death. HIV, you will see it, but it'll take longer. Tuberculosis, because of its different natural history, if, if you have a bad program, 
it may be a decade later, five to ten years later, that you start seeing an actual increase in tuberculosis cases. So they're very different, all these diseases, but yet they are, they do interact and are related, you know, have, in, have interrelations. Mm -hmm. And it does make sense to think holistically and try and address all of them. Um, and again, great progress, but a lot to be done. Well, I was very honored and fortunate to have been able to be at the, the first inoculation of the the malarial va vaccination to Viarius, I think it was, in South Africa when we were down there for the IS meeting, uh, to two young infants who put it on camera. I cannot find the footage. I've got to look for that. It was just precious. But it was, it was a first step. And, yes. and that, like you say, is, is probably the most important thing is to address the childhood um, uh, issue. You know, and so forth. Well, well in, these, in these countries of sub-Saharan Africa where malaria is, uh, is endemic, it, it's children particularly who carry the greatest burden. And, and where you, because with, with time, a, a relative immunity does develop. It's not absolute. And it breaks down in pregnancy, for example. So pregnant women are another important population needing attention. But uh, a relative immunity develops. And, and uh, once children get through those first years of life and develop that and don't die, uh, then it, they're, they're less likely to die later on if they, if they remain living in that particular environment. So with what you've seen so far and, and anticipate seeing at the Croix, you probably know a lot of what's going to happen. Um, how do you feel about the, the future? Is it, is it more hopeful? And oh, I think, uh, I think we have to be uh, hopeful, yes. I mean, I think we have to be optimistic, but, you know, hope, uh, there's a saying that in medicine, uh, hope is a good companion but a poor guide. Uh, so, you know, we have to be very strategic. We have mm -hmm. to be very, we have to follow the science, follow the data, follow the evidence. And that's what this conference is all about. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, we, uh, if, just to perhaps make a few comments on the, the conference itself and the sorts yes. of directions of the science. Uh, in basic science, and I assume you'll be talking to yes. people who do that for a living. And yes, and and you, you know, the talk of eradicating HIV infection from the infected individual uh, is a, a very hot topic of discussion and yes. you probably saw this case of the baby in Mississippi yes. which has attracted so much news. Uh, very important uh, events to learn from. Uh, I think we need to be cautious about extrapolating too much from a single case. Thank you. I think that will be a Yes. I'm sure that message and, and, will be and, repeated. And how that might be couched yes. or yes. expanded upon yes. by the, the main news media. I think we have to really... So you have an important responsibility yes, to I do. <laughs> put that into context. But, you know, you can learn from these individual experiences, uh, learn a lot, and, and, and that's how science mm -hmm. works. Um, there's uh, been a lot of, uh, a, a, I think, one interesting development is that Croy is focusing more on a couple of allied conditions to HIV. Mm -hmm. um, one is hepatitis, particularly hepatitis C, and the treatment of hepatitis C, and the other is tuberculosis. Uh, mm -hmm. So CROI is trying to bring other good science into the meeting, to particularly around those two topics that are important because in some, uh, they are important in their own right, but in, as I said about tuberculosis already, in some parts of the world, a substantial overlap exists uh, and there's an association and the same is true for hepatitis C in some parts of the world mm -hmm. where uh, for example in Eastern Europe where HIV is spread predominantly through injecting drug use um, there's a lot of hepatitis C in the mm -hmm. HIV infected population as well so that's an important sort of um, general change or general um, uh, development uh, a lot of talk uh, about the epidemic in men who have sex with men uh, that and we have finally realized, uh, why, did t why did it take us so long, I don't know, but we have finally realized that, of course, there are men who have sex with men all over the world, mm -hmm. and wherever you look, they have an increased risk for HIV infection. So this is not just a, mm -hmm. a phenomenon of, uh, that's restricted to industrialized countries. And I think that's an important development. There was a very good plenary this morning by Chris Baer. Uh, it's worth looking at. Um, there is uh, a lot of attention to the uh, issue of how to use antiretroviral therapy for prevention as well as treatment. So a lot of interest in test and treat, uh, you know, the approach of uh, perhaps testing ev as many people as possible and getting them onto Especially therapy. In area. Yes, yeah. so there's a lot of attention and research around that, a lot of discussion. Mm -hmm. um, um, 
it's just a, a very rich program once again this year, and I think we're, we're very pleased with it. Yeah, I think in the social implications too, as, we, as you mentioned, that uh, we've discovered that men have sex with men, and some countries are in denial still, and that largely adds to the complexity of it. Is, oh, it is, does. And actually, I think it's, you know, it's very interesting. I often make this point in, uh, in my, when, I, when I talk, particularly in Africa. Um, I, I point out two things. Firstly, that actually the U.S. government and U.S. political leadership from President Obama himself, but our Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, have spoken very strongly uh, about the rights of, of uh, of you know gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender uh, populations that their rights are human rights, and that's very important. And I've pointed out in Africa often that uh, you know we've it's easy to talk about uh, things like how we should use antiretroviral therapy in pregnancy and whether we should expand the use and so on. These are safe discussions, but you know we our commitment to this whole issue is judged by how we deal with the difficult issues. And in yes. those countries, often the issue of uh, gay and bisexual and transgender populations are, are difficult issues. They, the, these issues have not been broached before. Um, they're stigmatized. Uh, there's cultural uh, restrictions and so on. And yet, we're all in this together. And uh, this these issues have to be addressed. It's a long road, and we've, yeah. we've been on. It's almost like a roller coaster yeah. because sometimes yeah. we make progress, and other times we go back. Backwards. I've yeah. just been talking to a doctor from Canada last night, and says, "In Vancouver, we're going backwards again." Yeah. It, it is. A, it is very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I um, I appreciate the work that you do, and 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 wh wherever you are, you seem to be in presence, and uh, and uh, certainly worthy of 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 all the uh, accolades you've got over the years, and and we certainly appreciate your presence on our program because you contribute in a way, kind of as a, a, a grounding in realities. We said even especially as in, in the media. Uh, we don't want to overplay, promote, over promote anything. We want to give the real science uh, and translate it in a way that's, you know, it's, it's very difficult material, but there is a way to bring it down yes. to a level that people yes. can understand yes. it. Yes, and that's important. Exactly. And you play a very important role there. Well, thank you. So, uh, thanks. Thank you. Well, very good. Good I appreciate to see you again. I look forward to, see to seeing you next yes. year. Yes, for sure. <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>